Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. On this channel, what I do is, well, help you learn Linux. That's in the title, and that's the goal of this channel in particular. But how exactly do you go about learning Linux? I mean, I've created countless tutorials for you guys, but one topic that I really didn't cover yet, surprisingly, is how you go about learning Linux. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. I get all kinds of comments and questions from you guys. For example, how do you memorize everything? And which distributions should I start with? There's all kinds of things that people generally want to know when it comes to approaching Linux as something that they want to learn. And in today's video, well, like I said, I'm going to give you some tips to make the whole process a lot easier. Now, before we get to that, though, I do need to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video. If you're looking for a cloud provider that's affordable, flexible, and reliable, then look no further than Akamai Connected Cloud. With Akamai's cloud platform, you can spin up Linux servers quickly, and the platform contains all the features you'll need to deploy full-featured solutions. And using the marketplace, you could easily deploy applications such as NextCloud, RocketChat, Mastodon, WordPress, Pi-hole, Plex, Jenkins, and many more. In fact, there's over 100 applications available in the marketplace. If you want to set up a custom Linux instance, you could do that too. All the popular Linux distributions are available on the platform, including, but not limited to, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, and many others. In fact, even Arch Linux is available. So check out Akamai Connected Cloud with the URL that you see on the screen right now, which will do two things. First, it'll help support this channel, which I'll really appreciate, and it'll also get you $100 in starter credit to check out the platform. And thank you yet again to Akamai for sponsoring this video. All right, with that out of the way, it's time to learn how to learn Linux. Like I said, I'm going to give you some tips on how to do just that. Specifically, I'm going to give you 10 tips for learning Linux. And let's start with the first one. And the first piece of advice that I have for you guys is to test multiple distributions. Now, you might think that's a no-brainer because I'm sure a lot of you are testing multiple distributions, but if you're approaching Linux for the first time, then this might be something that's a bit overwhelming. You might be wondering which distribution should you start with? And what's the difference between the distributions anyway? Well, a distribution of Linux is a combination of the Linux kernel along with, well, some additional software that helps you do various things. Like, for example, a desktop environment gives you a GUI that you could use to interact with your computer via a graphical user interface. We have web browsers for browsing the internet, text editors, music players, and so on. And the combination of software with the Linux kernel is, well, a Linux distribution. The reason why there's so many is because each one has a different collection of software. It might have a different UI, it might have a different choice for a web browser, or something else might be different, but each distribution aims to serve a particular audience. We have distributions that are for advanced users and distributions that are for beginners as well as general purpose distributions. However, my piece of advice for this first tip is for you to test multiple distributions. But how do you go about doing that? Well, if you're new to Linux, then you might not be aware of the fact that live mode exists. Not all distributions have this feature, but most of the prominent ones do. And with live mode, you can actually run the distribution from your flash drive without installing it on your computer. Now, running a Linux distribution this way might result in a performance penalty, so you might not want to judge the performance, especially if your flash drive is on the slower side, but it is an effective way to get started with Linux because you can simply demo a distribution, and then when you're done, you shut down the computer, remove the flash drive, and when you start your computer up the next time, it's like nothing ever happened because, well, nothing did happen. Another thing that I love about live mode in Linux installation media is because it allows you to find out if your hardware is supported. Sometimes I'll see messages in forums where people are mentioning that a piece of hardware isn't working for them, but the way I see it, you should never install any Linux distribution ever until you've tried it in live mode if live mode is available. That way, in live mode, you can find out if your Wi-Fi card works, if you have decent video performance, for example, you could watch a YouTube video from within live mode, you could even test your sound, multiple monitors, your printer, and things like that. That way, you'll have a general idea what's going to work and what won't when you go to install it. Perhaps everything is going to work and you won't have a problem at all. 
But if something doesn't, you could go ahead and just log into a forums. For example, the community page for this channel is a good one to go to. And there you could ask about the piece of hardware that's not working correctly. All in all, live mode is a great way to get started because what you can do is test out a bunch of distributions. And if you don't have a bunch of flash drives, then what you can do is check out my video on Ventoy, which will enable you to have multiple distribution installation media on one flash drive. Now the second tip that I have for you guys is to not rush the process. Slow down, take it easy, and just, well, enjoy it. Linux is fun to learn, but nothing is fun to learn when you're overwhelmed. And sometimes when people are overwhelmed, it's because they're trying to learn too much at a time. For example, if someone is going for a Linux certification, they might have a cram session to try to cram as much knowledge in their head as they can, but that's rarely effective. Your brain can only handle so much and you could easily be fatigued. The thing is, when you're learning Linux, you should enjoy it. You should focus on the enjoyment and the fun of it because that's what's going to carry you through. If you are, you know, worried about what to learn and learning it fast and all these other things, then you're just setting yourself up for failure because you have to enjoy what you're learning. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of trouble. So my advice for number two is take your time, focus on the enjoyment of the learning process, and try to not rush the process at all because you're just going to burn yourself out. Just take it easy and take your time, and that's the best way to learn. And also, be sure to take regular breaks. That way, you could take a break to absorb the knowledge or let it, you know, settle in your mind for a bit before you go and try to learn something else. All in all, learning Linux is fun, so if you don't rush the process, I think you're really going to enjoy it. Now for number three. And for number three, my advice for you is to not compare yourself to others. There's always going to be somebody that knows more than you. Maybe you have someone at work that is really good with Linux and they make everything look complicated and you're thinking, wow, I wish I could be that person and know everything that they know and be that good. Well, you can, especially if you pay attention to number two and, you know, not rush the process. But what you should especially not do is compare yourself to others. By comparing yourself to others, that gives you an inferiority complex, something that you really can't afford. Again, there's always, I repeat, always going to be somebody that knows more than you. All in all, just don't compare yourself to others. See if you can find a mentor or somebody that you can learn from and see others that know more than you as an opportunity to learn if they're willing to teach you a few things and you might find out some information and some cool tricks that you might not have known otherwise. Now it's time for number four and that tip is to keep an open mind and embrace change. The thing is, Linux is constantly changing for the better. It's being improved each and every day. But even if a new technology feature or some sort of change seems like a bad idea, well, keep an open mind. Learn why the change was made from the developers themselves. Try to understand where they're at and the reasoning for the change in particular. No one, not one single person, develops something for no reason. It's always to solve some sort of goal, so just try to keep that in mind. If you still don't like the change that's being implemented, even after understanding why the change was being made, then rather than complain, because we have no shortage of complaints within the Linux community, it's far more effective to join that community for that software project and engage in open discussion to let them know how you feel. Regardless, complaining is rarely effective, even though we see a lot of that nowadays. So what I recommend is to, again, join the community and engage in open discussion, and I'm sure you'll find it a lot more rewarding. Now it's time for the fifth piece of advice that I have for you guys. And I think this is the most important one on the list yet. In fact, this is something that I dealt with, which is where this advice is coming from. But for number five, my advice to you is to ignore the naysayers. The thing is, you might have people in your life that are telling you that you can't succeed, that you can't learn this, or maybe you have an inner voice in your head that's telling you that you can't succeed. In that case, your inner voice is a naysayer. You need to ignore the naysayers because if you want to learn Linux, then you can and you will learn Linux, regardless of what anybody tells you. Some people learn it very fast. Other people take a long time. But regardless, if you want to learn Linux, then learn Linux. When it comes to life, there's always going to be people that have something to say about what you want to do. And there's going to be people that'll talk down on you, that'll tell you that you're not going to make it. Again, just ignore those people. Now, if you need a bit of inspiration when it comes to ignoring people, then consider this. In my career, I've had several people tell me that I would never make it in IT, 
I've had some people tell me that I wasn't cut out for Linux and that I would never make it. I ignored those people and I did it anyway. And because I did it anyway, I have an entire platform where I could teach you guys Linux. And the thing is, it took a long time. You're seeing me right now after having a bunch of years of experience in Linux, but when I first started, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't understand why there were so many distributions. I didn't understand what the definition of a distribution was in the first place. I thought Linux was an operating system and not a platform. There's all kinds of things that I thought that weren't true. And when I first started with Linux, I was just as green as you might be. I knew absolutely nothing, but I enjoyed the learning process and I felt like Linux was something that I wanted to learn. So I ignored the naysayers and I learned it anyway. So if anybody is telling you in your life that you can't make it, even if that person is you inside your head telling you that you can't learn something, ignore it and learn it anyway. And who knows, in a few years, you'll look back and you'll really appreciate that you made that choice. Sorry to interrupt myself, but I just wanted to let you know that I really enjoy making this content for you guys. I have a ton of fun. If you enjoy the content that I produce, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. The thing is, producing content like this isn't cheap. So by giving back to the channel, you can help me make even more content for you guys. And to find out more about how you can support Learn Linux TV, what you could do is go to support.learnlinux.tv and there you'll find some of the ways that you can help support the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video. When it comes to my sixth tip on learning Linux, my advice is to not try to learn everything. I see this all the time. People try to memorize every single command and option. It's just a waste of time. Some of those things you won't use and you should focus on the things that you do intend on using. Now, on the other hand, if you're training for a certification, then you do have to memorize everything for the certification, but that's because of the certification, not because you have to memorize things when it comes to Linux. Some people think that I memorize everything and that's just not true. I sometimes consult my own books when I need to remember how to do something because if I don't do it every single day, then I'll probably forget it. And there's some things that I've written about in my books that I don't use every day. So every now and then I have to go into my own material and sometimes even my own videos to remember how I did something. So the thing is, you're never going to memorize everything. There's just not enough brain power for that. What most people are going to do is jot down notes for the things that they don't use every single day and then refer back to those notes if they find themselves using a command that they use infrequently in the future. But if you think about it this way, if you're going to learn a Linux related concept and then you try to learn everything about that concept, then everything is going to include things you just won't end up using, which is just a waste of brain power. Just be sure to focus on the things that you'll actually use. And if you find yourself using something that you didn't think you would, then you can go back to your reading material and learn it then. If you try to learn everything, then that's a very fast way of getting burned out. So my advice to you is just keep good notes and don't try to memorize everything. Like I said, you can always refer back to your notes. And as an added bonus, you could learn how to implement a Git repository by, you know, putting your notes in a Git repository, which will teach you how to do a commit, how to do a push, because Git is something that you probably will use. But even then, you don't have to learn everything about Git. You just need to know how to update your repository. And by having your notes in a repository, then they're easy for you to fetch if you need them later. Either way, just take your time. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, don't try to rush anything and especially don't try to memorize everything. Nobody remembers everything. And if they do, well, they must have sacrificed their entire life to do that, which is just not something you want to do. Work-life balance is very important. So take your time and you'll learn Linux in no time. Now for tip number seven, start a home lab. If you haven't ever heard of a home lab before and you have no idea what I'm talking about, a home lab is essentially a home server implementation. To build a home lab, it's common for people to purchase older servers on eBay, for example, servers that aren't fast enough for companies nowadays, but would be plenty fast for you if you're just one person or just a few people in your house, and you could usually get these for fairly cheap. In fact, setting up and maintaining a home lab can be a very fun hobby. And it's also a hobby that's getting very popular. And if you want a cheaper way of getting started, you could source a Raspberry Pi or perhaps an older server. You could pull a desktop out of your closet, for example, if you have one you're not using. You could turn that into a server. There's plenty of ways to get started. And I also am part of a podcast that covers home lab shenanigans, The Home Lab Show, which you can also check out 
as a means of learning. Now for tip number eight, and that is to join a Linux distribution project and contribute to it. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to learn a programming language, although you could if you wanted to, but you don't have to do that when it comes to contributing to a project. For example, you can help out in the forums and answer questions. That would be a very good way of helping a community. You could also write some documentation. If you feel the documentation for a project is lacking or you just want to contribute to it in some way, that's a very easy way to get started without having to learn how to code. Other ways that you can contribute to a Linux-related project is to test ISO releases. For example, if a distribution is calling for testers when a new version is about to be released, that's a great way to get started contributing to that community because they could always use testers and that's very important. You could download a pre-release version of a distribution, test it out, and if you run into any bugs, let the developers know about those bugs. And what happens after that is those bugs might be fixed before the final release of that project. And then everyone benefits because they might not run into the bugs that you did. So by finding the bugs yourself, you're making the entire experience better for everyone. For number nine, my piece of advice is to avoid toxicity. Just like in any community, there's going to be toxicity. Don't let it get you down. If a community is toxic, then you should leave that community. And by no means am I saying that a certain portion of the Linux community is toxic. It's just that when you have a lot of people that are passionate about something, you could have some people that are very rude about that or just like to stir up trouble. And that kind of thing happens as much as I don't like to admit it. When you do see that, and if nothing is being done about it in that community, the best thing to do is find a different one. You don't want to contend with toxicity because that can sour your opinion of Linux in general, and that's not fair because that means somebody is ruining the experience for you. You definitely don't want to let that happen. So if you're in a community and you're seeing comments that are you know, unkind or just toxic in general, then the best thing to do is just leave that community and go somewhere else. There's no shortage of communities out there. And if you want a good one to join, well, you could join the official community for Learn Linux TV. You could go to the official website. There's a link right there for the forums. And then you could register there and chat with other Linux fans just like yourself and have a lot of fun. Either way, just avoid toxicity and your experience learning Linux will be all that much better for it. Now for number 10. And this is going to be similar to other pieces of advice I gave you in this video, but it's very important. So for number 10, my advice is to have fun. Always focus on the fun. If something isn't fun, then take a break from it. Now, don't get me wrong. Every now and then, you might have to learn something that you don't enjoy if it's required for your job, for example. And if that's the case, then you could always offset that by learning something fun that you do want to learn. Either way, always focus on the fun because that's what's going to carry you through the entire experience. After all, if it's not fun, then you're not going to want to do it at all. So always look at the fun aspect of learning Linux because by focusing on that, you'll never get bored and you'll have a great time. And that combined with all the other pieces of advice I gave you in this video should lead to a very rewarding experience when it comes to Linux learning. Anyway, that's all I have for you today when it comes to my 10 tips for learning Linux. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope my tips have helped you out. If you did find enjoyment in this content, then please click that like button to let YouTube know how you felt about this video. I would really appreciate that. In the meantime, I have some awesome content coming, if I do say so myself, so be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.